cutaneous T cell lymphomas, unlike other lymphomas, are detected early on. Why? Because the patients present with a rash, a rash that they don't know if it's an eczema, they don't know if it's psoriasis. Um, the disease burden is minimal and the patients are perplexed. Uh, they go to the dermatologist and they uh, obtain a skin biopsy. Initially, they may try topical cortisone creams and the lesions do not go away. And pretty early in the, in the, in the evolution of lymphoma genesis, we obtain a, a biopsy. So again, that's very different than other lymphomas of novel uh, or other systemic uh, areas where the diagnosis is often reached when the patient has a high tumor burden with big masses that are palpable or the patient presents with constitutional symptoms. Um, and often at, uh, at the stage of diagnosis is a, an advanced stage. So in mycosis fungoides, we are able to witness the early stages of lymphomagenesis. And when we, we review those biopsies, often they are non-diagnostic. By that, I mean that the, the, the tissue may show a few tumor cells versus a lot of what we call tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. Uh, T cell mediated immune response against the malignant T cells. And the reactive T cells and the malignant T cells can pretty much look alike. So often those early stages of mycosis fungoides are under, I wouldn't say misinterpreted, but more like underinterpreted as uh, eczema or as dermatitis, un, dermatitis unspecified. So, so, so that's probably the, the main issue. And the patients may carry the wrong diagnosis or the, uh, they are underdiagnosed for several years. So actually there was a study years ago that showed that the, to, in order to reach a diagnosis of mycosis fungoides, it may take an average of six to seven years. So this delay in diagnosis, yet an early signal that's undervalued is a, is a, is a common uh, issue. So and a, second, uh, a second aspect that makes the diagnosis uh, uh, challenging for the clinician and for the pathologist is that we are dealing with a malignancy of mature and prime T cells. That means that those cells are immunologically active. That means that those cells express molecules and have a, a microscopic appearance of a benign or mature cell, pretty much similar to, to a chronic lymphocytic leukemia for B cells, CLL. The cells are small and round like normal lymphocytes. So this is not a blastic condition. It's not, at early on, it's not like large cells. So it's not something that calls the attention of the pathology as under, under the microscope. So those mature uh, T cells are immunologically active. They interact with the environment, with the microenvironment of the skin, and they may resemble microscopically and clinically other conditions like psoriasis, like eczema. Some cases look like vitiligo, that is hypopigmentation. Some cases may look like hyperpigmented, like lichen planus, for instance. So there is a, a wide variation of uh, clinical presentation. So a myriad of clinical and pathological presentations, which will, would pose a, a, a diagnostic dilemma for both the clinician and the pathologist. And this can go on for, for, for several years, as I said earlier. I, I think it's important to keep in mind um, for, for, uh, for clinicians in, in general, whether, whether we are talking about general practitioners, dermatologists, hematologists, that a patient with red skin, what we call erythroderma, it can be the first sign of a leukemia, which has a very poor prognosis. And even though there are many different causes of erythroderma, 
from psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, epitheritis, uh, uh, rubra pilaris, um, even, a, even a bacterial infection can cause erythroderma. Um, patients with erythroderma, they need, you, you must rule out Cesare syndrome. So all patients with erythroderma should be checked with a CBC looking for lymphocytosis. And even if they don't have lymphocytosis, I would recommend a flow cytometry analysis, which may uh, show early signs of an abnormal T cell population that must be followed and these patients will need further uh, workup. So including flow cytometry in the workup of patients with uh, red skin of unknown cause, what we call idiopathic, is, uh, is essential. Mm -hmm.